Recording in progress. Thanks. Okay, this is a regular meeting of the Fairhaven Zoning Board of Adjustment. Adequate notice of this meeting has been given pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. At the time of the board, at the board of the board reorganization in January of this year, the board adopted its regular meeting schedule for the notice of the schedule was sent to and published in the Asbury Park Press in the Star Ledger on January 20th, 2023. That notice was also posted on the bulletin board of the hall and has remained continuously posted there as required by the staff. Copy of the notice is and has been available to the public in a growing file in the office of the growing public. Copy of the notice is also been sent to such members of the public as they requested such information in accordance with the statute. Adequate notice having been given. Board Secretary is directed to include the statement in the minutes of this meeting. Before proceeding with the formal meeting tonight, I'd like to say a few words to the applicants for experts in the audience about the role and authority of the Fair and Zoning Board of Justice. The board is a separate and independent municipal legal entity, and its limited authority is specifically set forth in our ordinances and the New Jersey Municipal Land Use Law. It's quasi judicial in nature, and the members of the board are unpaid volunteers appointed by the mayor and council. The zoning board does not enact the borough land use laws and regulations, the borough council does that. The zoning board does not enforce the land use laws of the borough fair. This is the responsibility of the borough code enforcement officer. This board deals with appeals for relief and the requirements of the borough's land use law and the board denial by the zoning officer. An applicant is never entitled to a variance, also known as an exception to the zoning regulations, but must meet specific criteria required in the New Jersey Municipal Land Use Law and the Fair Haven Ordinances by, uh, uh, by satisfying certain required standards of relief. The board has no authority to waive these requirements. The burden of proof is always upon the applicant to show that he or she is entitled to the specific relief requested. The applicant must prove that a deviation from the regulations will advance the purpose of the ordinance. And that the deviation would substantially outweigh the definition of his own plan. Variances related to the future use of the land and are not intended or authorized for any temporary or unique personal situations. Ms. Paul, please, Alice. Superintendent. Here. Mr. Rivers. Here. Mr. Lyon. Dr. Walker. Here. Mr. Gonzalez. Here. Mr. Giovetti. Here. Mr. Weeder. Here. Mr. Portang. And Ms. Wingelow. Okay, so uh, prior to opening the meeting, we were having some internal discussions about, we have no microphone, there's no microphone. Yeah. No. No. Well, if that's what we're doing, that's what we're doing. Um, so we had a um, a notice issued to a board member that was unknown to all former county heads. We only had six. We now only have five. Um, you want to put your appearance on the record, Mr. Brodsky? Yes, uh, Rick Brodsky on behalf of the applicants. So Mr. Brodsky, what we had um, told you was that we were prepared to proceed tonight with five. There's another factor that you should be well aware of, which is that Mr. Kinsella in the past has recused himself from applications that are nearby Shrewsbury Yacht Club because he's a member and because he used to be an officer. Uh, I do not feel as though that recusal is necessary. And Mr. Kinsella and I spoke and speak for yourself. But my question was, if you can be objective in reviewing the application, uh, I don't see that that's necessary. Um, and so to the extent that you wanted to proceed, certainly we wanted to share with you that information because with a full board in the past, it was easy. Right. Um, it isn't as easy. Mm -hmm. Understood. So your question for us was, if not tonight, then when? Correct. And we were trying to figure out the answer. Exactly. What do you have? For we have the Whispering Woods application, which continues to push. So that's not set yet. That's not going <laughs> We're open next month. We have... Um, five other pending applications that came in, but none that are deemed complete today. Okay. So then Mr. Brodsky, the Whispering Woods hearing has been bouncing and I already mm -hmm. decided I'm not putting them on that. They're going another time. Okay. I can tell you part of that. Um, oh, I didn't know. That's, that's okay. It's, it's <laughs> good. Gotcha. Um, but um, so we're open. We can put you first. Um, and <laughs> anything that comes in and gets completed um, subsequently will go behind you. That's the best we can do for you tonight. It's better than I thought we might be able to promise, sure. but we can do that. I don't know who's here. So you've heard that Mr. Neshesny is not. Yeah. We're a board of nine. That takes us down to eight. Mm -hmm. um, 
who are the recusals for this application? You, you're not here. Do, is Marty not here because of a problem that related to the application? No, she Sherry? just, the uh, uh, Sherry had a personal problem. Marty told me last month he would make it. Frank is traveling in Iceland. He will be here. He really wanted to hear this case. So um, without me, that replaces Frank. That takes us down to okay. that me and him theoretically takes us to that. Yeah. Assuming everybody can make it, which we can find out for you certainly sure. sooner rather than later. Yeah, and we're um, talking November two, right? What is that? Is that right? I think it's the second. Yeah, first Thursday, it's November two. Yes. Mr. Brodsky, do you want to take some time with your client? Well, I'm just trying to get I'm just trying to get dates. Um, the November two is a conflict for both of my witnesses, so that brings us to December sixth. I will be here December 7th. Well, I think our meeting is December 7th. Or did we change that? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong day. December 7th. Yeah, I'll be here. Mr. Roth, look, um, you know, I, I certainly feel bad about what's happened tonight. If the 7th works for you in December, you know, we can put you first. I'll, I'll put you first. Okay. December 7th, I am good. December 7th. December 7 it is. Do you prefer to carry to the 7th? Yeah. Uh, we would need a motion to carry, and you need to give a stipulation of an extension of our time for that. Agreed. Okay. Motion to carry the Ryan application, 917 River Road to December 7th. Do you need a letter from Mr. Brock confirming that, or is his oral statement enough? His oral statement is sufficient. Very good. Okay. That was a motion by Ms. Chesney. Second. Is a second? Roll call when you're ready. Mr. Chesney? Yes. Mr. Ridgway? Yes. Mr. Mayor? Dr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Kinsella? Yes. Mr. Shiganti? Yes. Mr. Leader? Yes. Thank you. Sorry, Mayor. Mr. Ridgway, you won't be in need to officially notice. The theory that if you're here, you had notice of receiving the meeting. Applicants not have to re notice the December 7th meeting unless you're making modifications to your application. Okay. Drew, you have a comment about this? Thank you. Yes. Um, 917 Bird Road's further contract. Yes. Yeah, just a potentially um, data point for everybody. Um, on Tuesday's government by meeting, there's going to be an introduction of a new ordinance to amend chapter 30 to replace the riparian buffer ordinance to be a riparian zone. So I raise that here, given that this is waterfront. We've had very discussions in the past, so I just wanted to make sure Mr. Brodsky is aware that a repairing ordinance could potentially be changed before um, that next meeting. When you say it's going to be changed, do you have a new ordinance to put in its place, or you're simply taking out the old ordinance? I think it's, it's being amended based on state guidance. Taking it a zone, repairing zone, for describing some of the letter. I'm familiar with the ordinance, but the ordinance tied to old stormwater, and I thought it just needed to be wiped off the books, but that's not what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Although maybe the maybe the modification is just remove the yeah. no longer operable stuff. Yeah. Mr. Brodsky, are you aware of this? I'm not, but would wouldn't the time of application will protect us against any? So the application technically hasn't been complete yet. That would have to be voted on a few submission waivers at the beginning of the application. Okay. Um, is that right? The time of application is the time it's deemed complete. It isn't deemed complete until we give the oral waiver of the regular stuff we usually so I understand. Okay. Well, let's button that up. Let's button it up. I'm not sure I agree with that because I think it, it's the time of application rule. It, if it's ultimately deemed complete without any changes to when it was, to, to how it existed at the time of application, I believe Dunbar protects you in that situation. But if we could button that up, let's do that. Yeah, I think we should do that. So, okay. um, okay. We, we voted, it. we finished it, we carried it, but that's okay. Because what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna call it independent of that. We're gonna take What's that? 
we can do we're just for the just for the purposes of going through the waivers okay. and establishing the situation with regard to what we will or won't be waiving on the application and to make sure that there's no question as to completeness as of today's date. Um, we're going to call the Ryan matter at 917 River Road. Um, Mr. Roski, please turn to the record, please. Yes, uh, Rick Roski and Sal Grimm and Aaron on behalf of the uh, applicant, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ryan. All right. And so all we're doing right now is we're trying to understand um, the issues that are open, Mr. Rizzo, with regard to uh, the uh, the waiver of application materials. So can you walk the board, please? please. Certainly. Uh, but we'll confirm that we have jurisdiction with regard to the matter of the and the notices. Say it again. We're confirming we have jurisdiction. We, we do. We've been through it. I didn't even know the word. Okay. All right. So we confirm that we have jurisdiction. Now, Jordan, over to you with regard to the proposed waivers. Okay. So, as outlined on page five of the September 5th, 2023 letter in my office, there are three uh, checklist items that the applicant is requesting a waiver from. Uh, it is the Monmouth County Planning Board application, the Freehold SCD application, and the Monmouth County uh, Board of Health application. Um, so they're not providing them now, but probably possibly subject to subject to approval, but um, they haven't been presented at this time. Okay, so all we're being asked to do is to waive our requirement to the extent we would have one for those to be in hand or addressed substantively prior to proceeding with the application. To waive them is simply to say that we do not require they be satisfied first, but we've not made them inapplicable or in any way adjusted to jurisdiction of those other agencies, correct? It's to deem them complete. For the purpose of deeming them complete. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, does the engineer recommend that we waive those? I do recommend that you waive those. Yeah. That's true. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, um, Thank you. I'm going to uh, just formalize it with a with a proposed resolution or a proposed uh, motion um, that we uh, deem the application complete, notwithstanding uh, the applicant's request that we um, uh, defer uh, these things. Okay. <laughs> 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 Just like that. Right. I need a second. Second. So we need a roll. Okay. Yes. Sir. First bite. Dr. Walker. Yes. Mr. Kinsella. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. 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 Right, right. Now we're back to the resolution. It's in the first order. Um, the other uh, matter that was on our agenda today is the Whispering Woods hearing with regard to the Paolo uh, for that application and that application. Before once gives an update on that, Doug. For my, my understanding is that the parties with regard to this matter are still reviewing the modifications concerning the location of the accessory structure specifically the and that all parties have requested or there's been a request by the applicant to for adjournment, and all parties have consented to that. It's my recommendation to require this to our November meeting at this point. Yes. So let's talk about that because my reaction, as I just shared with Ms. Brodsky, was that I was not going to talk about it. They have been first on our agenda for like three or four months, and notice of the fact that they were not going to proceed came on day 10. So if theoretically we had other matters that we had pushed aside, we didn't even have enough time to contact those people and, and fill our night. So really, you know, really difficult to deal with. Um, however, we have five pending matters and we just put one first for December. So unless anybody, unless anybody feels differently, it would seem like the only thing we could do is move them to November um, since we don't have anything else on that agenda. I just don't want them to get in somebody's way. The story reading is out for December as well. So we know that already. Then we can't come So November or He was good for the November date? He's good for the November date, but not the December. Okay. All right. Anybody have any, uh, anybody want to make a motion? Uh, we're recusing from that one anyways. The truth is, uh, and for the one you so, to make a motion to carry it the next November. Yeah. 
I make a motion we carry the Whispering Woods uh, hearing to the November meeting. Sweet. Okay. Or, nice. That's a follow the follow up. Yeah. Really, really well done. Do we have a second on that motion? Yeah, I'll second. Dr. Lauper seconded. Mr. Duchesne and I are accusing ourselves from this, so we, we're not going to be voting. Mr. Ridgeway? Yes. Dr. Lauper? Yes. Mr. Kinsella? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Chiavetti? Yes. So, motion so, carries. All right, just some administrative things to go through that I spoke. Uh, that is for the September 7th meeting. I have reviewed and had no. Uh, Changes to make, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the September 7th meeting. Second. 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 Yes. Second. Dr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Kinsella? Yes. Is she ready? That was not here. Good leader. Yes. Uh, annual report pending. Uh, Mr. Ryan and I are still working on this, so I will uh, hopefully Mr. Ryan will present something at the next meeting, and I will not be here. But I will. We will not be discussing the pending annual report of 2022. Well, let's get that done in 2023. Right? Yeah, I had <laughs> planned it, but then we got a little bit. We've had a, a draft for several months, but then we got some new information. So okay, it will be it will be done. Uh, meeting dates for 2024. Uh, we have circulated these two. Has everybody had a look at them? I know they came out kind of late. The only one I had a question on. Thank you. So April 4th this spring break. I think we pushed that to the 11th yeah. of April. The only other one I had a question on was October 3rd, because I think it's their Jewish holiday on October 3rd. Is that a problem for anybody? Does anybody think that's a problem? Could be a problem. Maybe. Oh, that is a problem. Yeah, I don't know. October, the... Um, Uh, Rosh Hashanah, it's Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. It's uh, from the second to the fourth. So we should probably get rid of that. So then, I would propose we move that to the tenth. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. That Columbus time. No, it's not that Columbus So is it is that the right uh, is that the right day? Yeah, Thursday the 10th. So April 11th for the April meeting and October the 10th for, uh, for the October meeting. It's really all you get, Allison, because there's no point in voting on it because this won't be the board in January. It becomes right. formal dates in January, but that's the best we can vote. Yep. Yep. Um, the resolutions, are we done with those things? Finally, you, done that month, you should have all the contracts in front of you, the resolution now is authorization to sign the, sign the document. I know the board had some discussions with those exactly with regard to the attorney. Hopefully those are resolved. Those are resolved. They're eligible to sign. I think everyone else is eligible to sign. So they're eligible to sign now, right? We need to do another resolution? No, no, no. I believe you had done that. I don't believe you had the contracts. And I think one of them was simply ministerial. It had not been located when it was sent back to you. In, in the emails that when I left here at last meeting it was find the contract that I did. It was in the email response before as an attachment to the treatment Okay. And I did see it. No. I hope you did. No. I have a Sandy doesn't have any resolution for those three positions and I have the contracts in the slide. Are the contracts on? Okay. Resolutions. When they originally proposed that they accept, and I thought authorized to sign. They, they always say the same thing. Yeah. Patio. 
three resolutions. But well, we did the resolutions for all three of them. Yeah. So there was an open issue with regard mm -hmm. to the engineer contract that we worked through. Doug, you worked on that language. Yeah. There was an open issue with Doug's agreement, which we talked about last time, and that's not going to change. And with the planner, they did press repeat, so there was nothing wrong with that. They just changed the rate schedule. So I will sign all three of those contracts. Yeah. Those resolutions were done, mm -hmm. and these this comes off of our agenda. Can we have the both of these or we, we did? I thought we did last last week. No, we've done like a million times oh, years ago. I don't know. Yeah, it, it was there was good reason to keep them on the agenda because the contracts were not working, and I never got closed out. And thanks to our attorney, our engineer for working on a handshake. Um, but you know, yeah, no, it's probably time now. Okay. For next year. If there was any confusion, I make a motion that you authorize your chair to sign the contracts for the service support engineer for the period of the balance of this year and services of the board attorney for the balance of this year. Do you have a closing second? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Second. Roll call. Mr. Ridgeway? Yes. Dr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Kinsella? Yes. Mr. Chiavetti? Yes. Mr. Weiner? Yes. I think there was all three of them. Yeah, exactly. Um, resolution for Hoffman Cave, 149 Lincoln Avenue. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the resolution as submitted. Second. Yes. Mr. Ridgeway? Yes. Mr. Ridgeway? Yes. Dr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Kinsella? Yes. Mr. Kinsella? You were not here. No, not here. You were not here. for me there. Yes. Um, I was not here for either of the next two. Can I make a motion? You can still make a motion. Just to see before the board. Uh, well, well, wait, do we have resolutions for the extensions? There's two yeah. resolutions, one for all and four. Do we have a resolution for that? Oh, wait. We talked start. about them last oh, week. Of course we did. And so they, they both asked for 12 month extensions yeah. from, yeah. from yeah. today's date? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so what yeah. we talked about last month was sort of the, the simplifying of the procedures. Um, I think we addressed the, both of their substantive responses to the questions of, you know, why haven't you gotten started? They both had. Uh, responses. They provided responses. Um, and so uh, now we're being asked to adopt a resolution which will formally give them an additional 12 months. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about what was done or what we're being asked to do? Okay. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Approve the resolution for Sullivan with two separate we've done for two separate. For Sullivan to with an extension of time from uh, from today's date. I uh, make the motion. Second. Mr. McChesney? Yes. Mr. Ridgeway? Yes. Dr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Kinsella? Yes. Mr. Steve Evans? Yeah. Voted on either. Mr. Weaver. Got it. Well, you could approve two of you. Yes. Okay. Uh, if they're just asking for a 12 month extension, you know, it's straight here. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You, you, know, you, you say now or abstain or anyone did? Yes. I'm making a uh, motion to approve a resolution for Rice Board by Maple Avenue to extend the time from today's date. Back. Yes. Mr. Yes. Dr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Kinsella? Yes. Mr. Shiva? Yes. Mr. Lee? Yes. Yeah. So before we open to the public, the public comment, um, is, is anybody have anything for the good news? That was a really chaotic 20 minutes. Can <laughs> <laughs> I? Sorry. I on um, the whispering was, do they need to renew this for no. question? No, we didn't. I did not theory that. Not that the last month, we were advised to be back at this month, and now if you're here back at this month, and now we're to come for November. So not requiring any notice. That's the end Okay, I'm going to open to the public. Um, well, are there any members of the public that have any concerns? One thing, the borough hold their special meeting about who they were going to have. Bill the uh, secretary. Hi, Sheila. How are you? Good, you enjoying your spot over there? Yeah, it's taking a moment. You ready to come over here with us? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's next to me. Yeah. This was super unusual tonight. Um, 
And thank you. We look forward to working with you. Maybe I'll turn it back. Hold <laughs> 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 uh, Okay, so that was your question? Yeah. Okay. Drew, you want to come explain yourself on the riparian thing? Sure. I just thought it was probably. Yeah. No, really. mm -hmm. uh, so do you understand that there is a that you're sort of locked into the ordinances at a moment in time that can be prior to the board actually hearing something? And so that was the issue that we were discussing was exactly when is that? Yep. Um, and so a new ordinance will not affect that. But nevertheless, I'm particularly interested because this is Mr. Schiavetti's issue. Correct. Uh, and we've been mentioning it for years because it was just not seemingly buttoned up. It seems to say, the old ordinance, that we should be taking into consideration that it's in this riparian zone, but there's really nothing that it directed us to do. And it was difficult to understand how with the DEP process, mm -hmm. where they would normally require certain things, why the, the, the town process would be any different well, or why we would have something. I'm not sure that there was nothing that directed us to do. I think me personally, I thought that it was very specific in directing us not to approve you know, development in those zones except under very strict circumstances, but it was constantly ignored and assumed to be granted by right or yeah. whatever by the DEP. Okay, so so, uh, so, so, I, so that's definitely correct. So we were getting things through that were in the riparian zone that was not referencing any issue with regard to that particular ordinance. So it was flagged and raised and discussed repeatedly. And so the, the board struggle was, well, what is this supposed to be? Well, why isn't it being flagged by the zoning officer? And the idea of you can't build within 300 feet of the water is obviously hysteric because no one would pay $3 million for a piece of land on the water if they couldn't build something. So there's this conflict in all of that. That brings us to you. So what yeah. are you going to do? So uh, Mike Irene wrote a letter back in 2021 outlining all the issues. Yeah. Um, long story short, was resurrected. And what is being introduced on Monday, and I'm going to, I want to caveat this. So Allison, help me out here, right? This is, hasn't even been introduced yet, right? But for the spirit of transparency, and you guys need a month, I just want to make sure it's clear. So um, amending ordinance, uh, ordinance amending chapter 30, uh, section 30-13 riparian buffers with new section 30-13 riparian zones in accordance with current statewide stormwater management regulations. So based on Irene's guidance, it was to have make sure there was complete alignment so that the ordinances were inconsistent. Um, the state of New Jersey and the DEP significantly updated and revised stormwater management regs. The borough of Fairhaven was made aware by its land use professionals that the current section of the borough code is outdated with respect to these regulations. The borough amends this in accordance with the aforesaid statewide stormwater ma management regulations. So it took Mike Irene's letter, it looked at riparian, and then updated our ordinance to ensure consistency um, with the state. So do you, do you understand whether or not we'll still have a town ordinance that sort of lays into the same area that the DEP authority goes to? Like, will you need special? Really? Relief. You need DEP regardless, but is it still a board issue? I will ask that on Monday, on Tuesday with the attorney, because okay. that is the moment in which we can change pieces of the ordinance. So if it doesn't hit that point, do you mind if I follow up with you an email to get the exact piece that we want to make sure in writing, just so I can follow up on Tuesday? You can try. Um, all right. So I'm not sure I understand the answer. Of course, you know, I just don't know if I can answer all the questions. Yeah. Here's what here's what I think that I would have you understand about the way that I do it, and then Mr. Shiva, you probably give me what I'm wrong. But <laughs> what what I understand it to be. So so remember, we've got certain standards of what you can do. Mm -hmm. If you're going to deviate from those standards, this board is empowered to grant variances. And in order to grant those variances, we have to evaluate the criteria that's set forth in the MLUL case law with regard to how and when and why sure. we would grant those variances. To the extent that the riparian buffer area, okay, is going to trip up some town review where they're gonna say this is okay or not okay, that's fine. But to the extent that they don't comply and they have to come to us, we need to understand whether or not it's a C variance, D variance, whether it's a design waiver, and there's only limited things that you can send to us. You can't make new variances. So it's in the context of all of that, 
that this board wants to understand. If you guys say we're going to the DEP on this stuff, that much we could understand. If what you're going to say is we want the board to evaluate things in this area with an eye towards stormwater management and ensure that you are doing all that you can do when you evaluate these plans to make double issue that drainage and runoff issues are addressed. That would at least be some direction. You know, we could do dry wells where we may not be required to do dry wells. We could then be sort of directed to think about a lot of coverage variants because this is a heightened sensitivity in this area. Okay. The DEP normally handles that and we don't. But if you want us to, just give us guidelines. Does the board have a certain quote unquote feeling on it? Yeah, Al does. <laughs> I, I do, and there's there's two parts to it. Um, one, and sort of backstory is that at some point in the past, the DEP said all of you municipalities have to have riparian ordinance. Here's the boilerplate language. Use this. Okay. The borough put it in there. Um, it's still there up until potentially Tuesday, I guess. Um, and it has, the way I've read it, very narrow exceptions, narrower than anything else that we deal with as far as whether you can, it has narrower and different definitions than the rest of our work as far as what's considered disturbance and things like that. And it has very narrow exceptions that you are allowed to consider for development or disturbance in those areas. And that's the language that was given to them by the DEP back then, which also referred to DEP regulations, which apparently no longer exist. So the references are bad. Um, so it's an ordinance. It's, it's an independent of planning and development. It's in the stormwater management section, but it's an ordinance that says if you want, you know, if you want to disturb right. within this zone, you have to meet these more stringent criteria in order to develop. There. My understanding is that it was implemented for a long time, like the uh, fire smoke inspection was. At trend. Right. So what they said was, we concern, we're concerned about stormwater. We need everybody to adopt this, and they require it. The reason the definitions are different is because they don't come from our ordinances. Right. What I still don't understand is since the DEP is going to be evaluating whether or not they're going to get permits. See, that's the second part that I have a problem. I'm with. sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's okay. But it comes to the fact that this is something that's in our ordinances. Granted, it was at the DEP's behest that it was in our ordinances. It's still there. And everyone says, well, the DEP regulates that. But at the same time, they say, um, we get the variance by right from the DEP. They don't even have to, I, I think maybe all they have permit by right, whatever it is. I don't know if they even have to apply if anyone ever looks at it at the DEP. And for something that's spelled out that plainly in our so words, there's, 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 there's two different levels to it. There's a permit by rule, which is a minor situation. Right. Um, you don't have to necessarily apply, you just follow the, you know, the rules. And, and, that's, and that's what sort of hangs me up is the fact that we've got this ordinance on the books uh, potentially. So that's for Not minor small. applications. Then there's general permits, which is a step higher. And then there's individual permits. But every time that we've so. raised it on applications that are falling within this zone, buffer, whatever you want, area, whatever you want to call it, we're told, oh, permit by rule, don't worry about it. Well, that means that nobody's looking at it. You know, so I'm, I'm I guess part of my concern is how this is getting addressed. If we're saying that, don't worry about it, the DEP handles that. And at the same time, we're saying, don't worry about it, the DEP ignores that. that, that 
Yeah. But the reason that the DEP has the rule of permit by rule is because there is a balance between what they want to try and protect and their willingness to interfere with people's private properties. And so they've tried to create a standard which allows projects to proceed when, by definition, they're small enough that they decided they want to materially. Right, but all these people are saying, oh, permit by rule, that you know, DEP is not even going to look at it. But when I look at the ordinance, which is based supposedly on what the DEP would be looking at, it doesn't meet the criteria. So how? Oh, I'm not sure that's true. I don't know that what they gave us to put in our ordinances years ago as far as stormwater stuff is the same stuff that the DEP looks at. I think what the DEP looks at is, is more complicated. And I think that what they gave out was a, a request for us to put attention on it. Because if we can do anything local, they see that as positive, but I don't know that anybody ever reconciled the idea of where's the line on private property rights. What, what I am afraid of is that you've got certain standards for certain zones. And so if you say to somebody, you can't do the same thing that you could have done if you were off of the river, you better have a good reason for it. And so this board regularly defers things such as drainage to the borough engineer. We don't even get them. And the truth is that it's been screwed up for a long time, and it's all been outside of our purview because we're always told, don't worry, we got it. But the stormwater stuff's terrible. It isn't, it doesn't work. Um, and that's an independent issue. So my point with regard to this is that I'm afraid that we don't have the expertise, and I'm afraid of, 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 of getting into something where you're now fighting with people about how they can develop their multi-million dollar property. And I just think we better be real, real clear if we're being asked to do something that we know what we're doing and why. I also would suggest to you, because I reached out to Brian Rice on the EDC to find out what their thoughts were. He doesn't know anything about it. And so I found that a little, I found that really odd. Uh, in fact, I, we were at a committee meeting, the Environmental Commission puts together a quarterly with everybody involved in the environment. So um, when, when we sat down, you know, I said to everybody, anybody want to talk about stormwater? I mean, I've got a river going on here. I've started to burn my property down here to make sure that the water coming down the hill is not going to wind up in my house. There's 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 residents that have serious issues mm -hmm. that weren't addressed. In fact, one of the awesome things I heard about you was specifically what you had done on Colonial Court to stop the nonsense and say, we got to look at this. And you made something happen. And those people are dying. And the ability of certain people in the world to be like, it's fine, is just... It makes me want to quit. All of that. Because people, they get disheartened by that response. And you don't do that. And I just thank you so much for that. But what we're getting on here is, I think you should reach out to the environmental commission. I think that you should think about whether or not we want to do something. And if so, what is it? You should clean up the ordinances, no doubt. And maybe just proceed with what you've got if you're just going to clean it up. But consider whether you want to do something more. And think about it on balance. And I'm sure Al would love to sit on a committee and talk it through and see whether or not we can do useful yeah. things mm -hmm. that don't overly restrict private property rights and create litigation mm -hmm. and problems for people who just want to enjoy their properties in a way that's consistent with the development patterns around the state for 100 years. Check, check. Understood. Thanks, guys. I appreciate everything, all the time. I'll uh, provide an update. Um, and if it makes sense to work on this a little bit more and partner more on this it's worth it definitely i'm sure ec gets it sure can i make one comment also yeah. i haven't seen any proposed language but i've heard a lot of uh, riparian and also stormwater so they're not one and the same they're they're different um i believe this is probably generated originally from a riparian section and the state has their own riparian code and their own stormwater code okay they're separate codes so if you're going to reference it, I'll try to stick to repairing if that's the theme you want to go with. Um, the repairing zone is 300 feet from Madison River. If it's okay with the chairman, what I would like to do is I'd like to send you Mike Irene's original letter from 21 mm -hmm. and send you the ordinance that's being presented on Tuesday. Yeah, and then sure. we just have a conversation. Yeah. No, I think it's a great idea. In fact, I don't know whether or not Jordan's outfit has had experience with this in other towns. They may be able to provide some guidance. Okay. Um, and if you don't have anybody from the engineering side, then I think that that's something that would be just a great idea. I'll send something tomorrow. Nick says it's replacing section 30-13 right hand buffer with the new section 30-13 right hand zone. The, 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 the existing language, though, says new disturbances for projects or activities in the repairing zone. 
So there, it's already a call to repairing zone. So I don't know if that's the actual change. Check, check. So I really feel like on all problems, there's an opportunity to require dry wells full stop. Yes. And I will tell you that I have a dry well almost as big as this room, and it is full right now. I couldn't even empty my pool. It backed up. I couldn't believe it, but I had it. And I did it because I wanted to do it, and I didn't want my grass to be wet, and I wanted everything to be copacetic. But we don't require it on renovations. We only require it on new construction. I don't think it's required on new construction. I think we, we asked them to as part of I yeah, thought it was required as a condition of new construction, but maybe I'm wrong. So if someone submits an application, does he need any variances? Does it come to the board? New construction, ground up construction, I thought it was required, but you tell me no? I, I don't think so. I think we asked, but maybe the maybe the construction office does require it. It's crazy. Understood. Just so you understand what it is, it's a backhoe, it's a hole, it's rock, it's filter fabric, and it's perforated pipe. You button it up like a pie, and then you put the soil, and then you put your leaders to it. It allows the, 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 the water that would be on the surface to get to groundwater table faster so that it can it can it can recharge the aquifer and not run across the street. Check, check. Understood. Um, and so the idea that we don't do it for the cost of call it five thousand a project. Once you got a backhoe there, you're halfway home. Yep. So anybody doing any sort of material construction should be required. And so in this zone, it to me saying no is a problem, but saying yes if is better. And saying deal with that water, don't dump it into the river. Adding ten thousand dollars to a riverfront project wouldn't be the end of the world. And you're not stopping them, you just make them smarter. I'm gonna agree. I'm gonna there's probably other towns that will have ordinances around this. So there, there are towns that have ordinances that do require dry wells. Perfect. And get parameters for that. So I will you, the one thing I would say about that though is that the property behind mine that's captain's pointy or whatever the heck it is, went through almost a decade of planning board meetings, lawsuits, whispering the woods hearings, professional engineers from start to finish, including the borough planning board and applicants and objectors professionals and as soon as, as soon as somebody finally moved into the property behind mine mm. despite all of that decade of engineering back and forth and expertise they had a guy out there with a backhoe and a hand-drawn pencil on ruled paper having to redo dry well and drainage because it didn't work so for all that we do here to require people to do it it's in the data we got to put trust in the professors we hired up yeah, i mean out where i grew up in cranford they did this whole you know, flood retention thing they put the valve in backwards you know, <laughs> i mean it's it flooded two more times and there was supposed you know, to fix that problem for the, for the time that was spent no, and, and, and the that. and the professional that were involved in the, the the money that was spent on it to see that after all of that adjudication and litigation and, and whatever just kind of demonstrated to me to, you know, as much as we do do here, we're putting an awful lot of stock in people that are hired by the, well, the applicants. And, and, and at the same time, there, there's not really Post approval compliance because a, a big part of that project was also the permeable papers that were supposed to help with the drainage, which the first person that moved into the house after that went and sprayed sealer on as soon as they moved in. That's it's, exactly why we don't buy permeable papers, though. We, we're, we're ahead of that. We don't buy that. Um, but look, it, it's either keep trying or give up. Yeah. And there's, there's so many reasons to keep trying, but Drew's one. This guy just got to town. This guy is making things happen that other people haven't been able to make happen. Don't give up. Um, and the other thing about the dry wells on all projects, we got to spread the wealth. 
Like the idea that like the new guy has to build to this amazing standard and everybody else gets off the hook. You know, those are the ones on Facebook. They don't have dry wells, I assure you. And you know, they're not going out of their way. We're gonna spread this responsibility across all the neighborhoods and all the homes. And um, and we'll be doing better, if not perfect. This is something attainable. What I'd like to do is on um, the, the drainage component, I'll work with Jordan behind the scenes. Um, I'll get top cover um, and approval from mayor to maybe send some draft language your way so you guys can review and discuss and just make sure it kind of hits based on your experience. Keep, keep in mind that the, the riparian I'm keeping that separate. Buffer zone, et cetera. It's not just about, like you said, it's not just about storing it. Yep. It's about making sure that you don't tear out everything that has roots and have stuff fall into the river like they did over on the other side of the oceanic bridge. It's about making sure that you're not destroying habitat and things like that. Now, I'm not, I know a lot of these places are already disturbed to some degree, but like I said, the, the definitions in, in what currently exists, um, you know, were, were pretty specific and included additional definitions of disturbance that, that just go so far beyond what we're used to. Understood. And there's, there's more to it than, than drainage and stormwater. Yeah. There's... Um, You know, disturbance of the the land and what keeps it there, frankly, and also the the ecosystem that. Uh, so. Yeah, understood. And what I'm going to treat the same with Jordan, who I've worked with before, is just we're we're going to gut check this language, right? And you know, we're going to apply some common sense to it. And if the common sense is there, there's no sense in putting something that's going to cause greater confusion for future residents, right? And for you, so. Appreciate it. Thanks. Great. Mono. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Is there an ordinance of dealing with bulkhead height? I have no idea. I can find out. The height of the bulkhead. Right. Local. Right. I think that was. I don't, I've it's never seen one. Do you believe there is one? No, I, I think there should be one. Well, no, no, I think you know, yeah. I know when you go to the bulk there, you put a dock in, you have to get permits with the state for that. Oh, and and they highlight as a state comes down to the median yeah. flood lines and all of that. And I can I can tell you properties flood from the river. Yes. And they flood from the river onto the properties and then they go across into adjacent properties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and if there were a a mandatory bulkhead height, then you wouldn't have that issue. Well, you create a consistent height across so that right. you want them to be high, not low. No, I want and them to be high. Well, well, the state, state, state would create a consistent height across, but you're still going to have properties that don't even have one. So yeah, right. but the problem with that is <laughs> the state and the environmental <laughs> would prefer to have no bulkheads and uh, a natural shoreline, which is actually quite compatible in the long run. All. Yeah, yeah, I, I know it's very difficult to get yeah. a permit for a new bulk. Yeah. Most of it's replacement in the old ones. I, I, I agree. I agree with that. I'll get that. I'll lay it out. Yeah, it's habitat. We have something in there. What do we have, else? I'm looking for to see if it addresses height. Just please. Because a lot of what we've seen as we've been addressing the stormwater management issue is that the previous DEP tables, what they considered a 25-year storm, have now become five-year storms or 10-year storms, right. Right? right? So the entire scale, I'm going to say I shifted to the left. So it's required an entire new approach and perspective, just given the new reality, and I think we're getting something else, right? Which is the, the level in which the tide rises. I mean, there were two instances where yeah. the carpet pond flooded. more about surge. And it had to do with tide and tide. Yeah. Say it again. And we had McCarter Pond in the storm that we had this past weekend. Oh, did it? Mm -hmm. So where, it, where did it go? Uh, <laughs> on the grass adjacent, and then into the Fairhaven Road. But it was high tide and full moon. Yeah. Um, but it's happened anyway. It's flooded twice this year. It's overflowed mm -hmm. twice this well, year. Well, McCarter Pond isn't connected to the to the river. Yes, yeah, it is. We got the culprit. It, it runs it. under. Yeah. You know the the. Uh, the north side of it, it runs underground. Yeah. Yeah, all these brackish? No, it's not brackish, but it, it does feed the river. Yeah. 
And I imagine if, or, or your river gets if the river right. gets high enough that that's not going to have anywhere to go. Correct. And that's that's what we're expecting. So, we're so you're not gonna, I don't think you're going to get a surge per se in the pond, but the the, the overflow from the pond, the drainage from the pond, isn't going to have any place to go if there's a surge in the river, but and it backs up the, yeah. that tributary. I think. Yeah. But getting to, to Todd's point, right, with drainage, so we have a grant that's going to allow us to redo all of Fairhaven Road, right, from where Lupo is all the way to, where's Rich? I yeah, confused. See so, who he is? Yeah, exactly. I'm still <laughs> uh, but the point is, is that, that that's now part of the discussion, right, because we now seen this behavior, we have ways now that we can mitigate it, especially today, so. Hey, I can show you a video that that's the, on the corner of Buttonwood and Fairhaven. I can show you a video of a river coming down that hill and going right into the natural area. I sent it to Tracy and I sent it to Josh. And I think Megan was on council at the time. Like in the moment, it was, I've never seen anything like that. Well, never seen anything like that. You should also think of the river and you walk down. Actually, you probably notice that when, you, that when you're at the aqua last Thursday, the like a massive erosion that happens at the very bottom of Browns Lane or Hill. I mean, if they don't, they truck load of rocks down there. It would be a big improvement. Yeah, sure enough. Could have been in New York City last Friday. Yeah. But but to do that, you got to get approval from the DEB. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, so like then I started to look at Facebook and hear from other people and hearing all their stories. And I realized that while this was scary because of the volume of water, there were so many scary things. I, all, I felt like terrible about raising attention to mine because it didn't seem serious. Yeah, you know, certainly I was at the edge of Edgewood comes down out of Wilson, and it's not for me and my neighbor cleaning out the culverts with all the debris that gets washed in there. I mean, that whole our whole neighbor would be on the floor. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's where, you know, lack of, you know, geography wise, you know, we're in a bad spot. We're at the bottom of the hill, the water's running you know, between there and the creek, the water wants to go. And yeah. this is all the more reason why this discussion is so important, right? That the direction is very clear, right? That it makes sense because we have to combat it. It's not one dimensional. It's not, right? right? We have to do a hundred different ways and then the problem is going to show up somewhere else and then we're going to have to continually iterate, right? But well, we'll make the, progress. Which I just had mentioned too. I, mean, I think this needs to be, very even is going to address this. It needs to be a multi-town thing which runs and involved in other people because, yeah. you know, I live at the bottom of the hill, literally, Everything runs down the hill from Rumson to me, and you have people all around town about this problem. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. people are on the periphery of the town. We're affected by everybody else. So yeah. right across the street from me. So if you go Berryman Road to the culprit, cross it, and go into Rumson, the white uh, ranch on the corner, mm -hmm. um, they had been getting water that came down that road, Berryman Road on the Rumson side. It was topping the curve, and they're recessed, and they got wiped out. What they did was they actually built the berm. So it's curved and then it's berm to make sure that the water doesn't get over. So in a condition like yours, yeah. though, I don't know if it's possible. I haven't been. I, I'm lucky. It actually goes around me. Uh, my garage gets flooded very rarely. But we also, when we put our garage toward the driveway in, we put gravel in so we get some kind of drainage. Yeah. And we have a big drain in front of my garage. And I did weather well, work on this project because the drain got clogged. Yeah. Uh, because it washes, because the water washes all of my uh, mulch. So, so Brian, Brian Rice was talking about this at the, at the I'm not on the Environmental Commission, but at this round table, when I raised the issue of, of stormwater, everybody got to talking. But Brian was talking about some really thoughtful ideas that I'd never even thought of, that he's aware of. Things that we can require people to do that are not high dollar items, lot by lot, over time, they deal with the water as best they can to minimize what's going into the street. So. Please engage in 100%. Um, and thank you for being so aware of, of what's going on and, and on top of that. Appreciate it. One quick question your comment brought up, and that is somebody on the other side who pointed this to Daniel Officer um, filed the land use application. They have to notice the borough ferry. Does the borough look at that application and represent? Us to add that or impact of very interesting meeting, or just are we just notice and we say, okay, well, thank you for noticing. Here's a perfect example they're gonna tear a house down at the corner of one of this and circle, and they're 
not clear cutting, right? They took a bunch of trees down right. for that. So, so if they do it, that's going to impact tremendously. If they do it, right? They're going to notice right. the borough of Fairview. Well, maybe not for the tree cutting. No, but for, for if there's land use, you know, <laughs> well, they're not. That are, no, I'm, I'm just saying. Well, they, so, have, so they, would, they would have to notice the people across the street. Which, not, not, I wouldn't. The only if they need a variance. Uh, right, right. What, what I'm saying is, even, even if it's just somebody needs a variance, whatever it is, they're across the street, they have to notice the borough of Fair Haven. How, how did that work? Who so, reviews yeah. that? Does that does yeah. anyone review it? And who is it? Is it the you, borough you, engineer you, the planning who works the zoning board? So two hundred lists still yeah. just going to involve those yeah. people. Yeah. And then, right. then the borough is an additional yeah. part right. notice. So so the borough receives notice of something like that. Do we just go, okay, we got notice? Well, or just is there a, someone whose job yeah, it is to look that, at that application? That gets into something else. Al, I don't want to that, open this can it, no. And Al can just go to mayor and council and how would that be? And then why, why isn't it ever a, they don't, they don't. that's the answer. Why isn't there some kind of communication between the towns? Talk about even just simple things about when we're working on a ridge road and a river road at the same time, at the same day, parents is doing something rough somewhere. Can we get a spreadsheet together? You know, I mean, it's, it, I mean, we are one town. I mean, we think of ourselves as three towns, but we are basically one town. Let's have some kind of combined effort on this. We might be out of our lane. No, we're totally out of our lane. That's your problem, not mine. You're a chair and fly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other comments from the public? Okay. Um, anything else from board members? No, oh, glad we found something useful to do with our time tonight. Uh, moving forward, if you get a notice, let everybody, just a whole board wide email. Enough of this insulated, nobody emails each other's okay. things, right? Just because you, you just put, you're not reply all, got this notice. <laughs> or you can just send it, and if you all not talk about applications on email, we'd all be fine. And it doesn't happen, so I don't know why there's a solution or problem that doesn't exist. Oh, no, it's the attorney and the secretary. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. So moving forward, we're going to have everything together again, and that'll make sense. But if everybody knows, there's less likelihood that it gets missed. Um, all right. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.